Hey everyone, it's wading bird nesting season here again at the St. Augustine Alligator Farm. This usually really gets going every year around Valentine's Day, but even though we're in late March, it's still really early in the nesting season. Peak season for the wading bird species here is around mid-April into early May. At that point, you have chicks hatching out everywhere, bird species still nesting, and you have a bunch of gangly chicks running around. So right now, it's mostly just nest building going on and lots of adults flying in carrying six. We do have a few nests that have started hatching, mostly great egrets, and we do have a few spoonbill nests. And as of two days ago, I did hear the first wood stork chicks, but I have not been able to see them. They're way up high in the treetops. If you just want to follow me over here, we're going to go over and look at the spoonbill nest. So roseate spoonbills are an imperiled species here in Florida. They'll lay between two and four eggs per nest and hatch out that many chicks, but it's very rare for four chicks to fledge the nest. Right here, up here in the top of this palm tree is our very first spoonbill nest that hatched out this year. And they are successfully rearing two chicks that are close to fledgling. Fledgling is, is the term used for when they leave the nest. And for spoonbills, that's around five weeks of age and they're getting very close. What is really extra special about this nest is the, the mother of the chicks is a bird that hatched out here in 2015 and was banded. So she has a little bracelet basically on her leg. It's a yellow bracelet and it says the letters NR. And at the time we took, we had the chick out of the nest to put a leg band on it, which by the way, we do this with Audubon of Florida. We took some feathers as well for DNA sexing and that's how we, she, we know she's the mother of these chicks. So one of the most common questions that we get asked every day, all day, is are these birds wild? Why, why are they coming here to nest? And just like they would in the wild, they would naturally nest over larger congregations of alligators. So these are all wild birds, but we do provide a habitat. We micromanage the habitat to try to really encourage them to come. You know, you build it, they will come. And we provide them with the alligators. Now what alligators do to help out these birds is they protect them from predators. And though, yes, American alligators and the two American crocodiles in here are very large, dangerous predators themselves, they eat the main predators of the things that really could harm these nesting birds. So your tree climbing predators, your feral cats, your snakes, your possums, your raccoons, they're not really making it very far across this water to get to those trees where the nesting birds are. So the chicks have a much higher survival rate nesting over alligators, whether it's out in the wild or here at our zoo. And they've been coming here since the swamp was built in the 1970s, but they were coming here and nesting in other parts of the zoo long before that. So the St. Augustine Alligator Farm has been in the current location since the 1930s and actually was founded in 1893. So our rookery is really popular, both with zoo guests that think they're just coming here to see alligators, which of course they're going to, plus almost every single other crocodilian I found around the world, but it's super popular with nature photographers. Because of this, we offer a photographer pass. It's a special pass, it's good for a year, but you also will get extended hours available outside of our normal guest, just our general zoo guest hours, so you can have some peace and quiet while you're uh, taking pictures of the birds. So this begins at 8 o'clock versus 9 when our general park opens and then you can stay until sunset, weather permitting, uh, after the zoo closes to the normal daily rate guests. It's really popular. We are really early in the season and it's already later in the morning and there's still quite a few photographers here because the lighting is just right. Uh, they can kind of spread out all along our two acre boardwalk and get all different perspectives. So right now we have less than 200 nests out in the rookery, but on a banner year, we can have almost 800. It's still really early, uh, so we expect a few hundred nests more to appear, especially since almost none of the smaller species have arrived yet. So some things that make this super great, uh, this is such a wonderful popular rookery for photography and for general guests because these some of these bird nests can be within arm reach. You don't have to have a super, duper zoom lens. Um, even just someone 
a teenager walking down can take pictures with just their phone just right there and get some great shots or you can get stuff from further away as well. There's so many options and the birds are nesting everywhere so you could easily spread out and get your own special slot with your own special nest for photography. So some wading bird rookeries have smaller numbers of species, but what's really unique about our facility is the last couple of years we've had nine species nesting. So there's a couple that aren't on this sign that are nesting. So white ibis for the first time nested last year. And what's not on here is the Mhinga. And so we have historically had an Mhinga nest in the rookery before, but we can't even remember when it when it was. It was so long ago. And this year we have two. Now Anhingas do naturally nest in wading bird rookeries, sometimes just a solitary nest, sometimes a smaller group of the same species. Uh, but we're really excited to have them because the more the merrier, really. And so we do have nine species this year nesting because of those anhinga. But if the white ibis decide to come in, then that'll be 10 species. The one that doesn't hang out with everyone else is the green herons. Let's see, they're right here on the sign. They have not started to arrive yet and they prefer a little bit more peace and quiet. So they nest far away from all these other wading birds up over in Land of Crocodiles. As we find those nests, we will announce where their locations are and hopefully they'll be in nice, easily viewable locations. That's what I always let them know. Uh, we do right now have wood storks nesting. And actually this year we do hope to ban some of those chicks. And that's in conjunction with the US Fish and Wildlife, the wood stork recovery project. We have spoonbill nests everywhere and definitely great egrets. So we have over 150 great egret nests right now. And then so a couple of snowy egrets and cattle egrets are starting to show up and build nests. And then just now when we were talking, I did see a pair of little blue heron squabble. That is also a species that's imperiled here in Florida and their numbers are in decline, but we'll have at least a dozen little blue heron nests every year. Uh, and then tricolors, of course, are arriving as well. Some of these other species just hang out, but mostly the rest of the year, year round, we do have birds hanging out in abundance, abundance in the rookery. But during the winter, it may be a hundred birds out here versus Peak count, 800 nests, two to four chicks per nest, a pair of adults per nest. As you can imagine, it's very, very loud, and it, but it's marvelous chaos that we love. As does everyone else. So peak season out here in the rookery is from March through June. So come on out any time of day, but definitely a little bit earlier in the day. It'll be a little bit cooler, and uh, I'll see you on the boardwalk.